In this video, we're learning about ATP. So we'll cover the structure of ATP, how ATP is synthesized and broken down, and then also the functions of ATP as well. Let's start with the structure of ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it's a type of molecule known as a nucleotide. It's super important because it's involved in energy transfer within cells, acting like a tiny rechargeable battery that powers all of our cellular processes. So if we take a look at its different parts, ATP is actually made up of three main components. A nitrogenous base called adenine, a five carbon sugar called ribose, and then it has three phosphate groups here as well. Now it might help you to remember its structure if you realize that the name adenosine triphosphate is actually giving you a few clues about its makeup. The word adenosine comes from adenine plus ribose, and then triphosphate literally just means three phosphates, because tri means three. Next, let's explore how ATP is synthesized and broken down in cells. Starting with how it's synthesized, this happens via condensation reactions. So it involves joining molecules together and releasing water. In this case, ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, where diphosphate means two phosphates, combines with an inorganic phosphate group, which we show as this P with a little subscript I next to it. This reaction is then catalyzed by an enzyme called ATP synthase, and it requires an input of energy in order to form a new bond between the phosphate groups. This traps energy in that bond, which is what creates the ATP and releases a molecule of water as a byproduct. Really importantly though, this reaction is reversible, which is crucial for energy transfer in cells because it means that our cells can keep reforming ATP and then breaking it down again in order to release energy. So now let's take a look at that reverse reaction, how ATP is broken down, which happens through hydrolysis reactions. In this reaction, we take ATP and we add a water molecule in order to break ATP back down into ADP and an inorganic phosphate. And it does this with the help of an enzyme called ATP hydrolase. This breaks this bond between the two outer phosphates and releases the energy stored in that bond. Finally, let's look at the functions of ATP and why it's such a crucial energy source for our cells. First, ATP is essential for movement, whether that's our overall movement that's achieved by muscle contractions or the movement of individual cells, so things like sperm cells swimming around. It's also used in active transport to move molecules or ions against a concentration gradient. A good example here is how ions enter into plant roots from the surrounding soil. Then thirdly, ATP is needed for synthesizing large molecules from smaller ones, just like how proteins are synthesized. It's also involved in the secretion of substances from cells. For instance, when hormones are secreted from cells within glands. Another role of ATP is activating other molecules such as enzymes. This happens when ATP is hydrolyzed and it releases an inorganic phosphate that can phosphorylate an enzyme, meaning it adds the phosphate group to it, and this makes the enzyme more reactive. Now, whilst ATP isn't great for long-term energy storage, it is really useful as an immediate energy source. So let's look at some of the features of ATP that make it so good at functioning this way. The first of these features is that the hydrolysis of ATP releases a small amount of energy and this means less gets lost as heat. Another feature is that it's broken down in just one step, so the energy gets released quickly, and it can also be rapidly resynthesized, meaning it's always readily available when needed. And on top of that, the bonds between phosphate groups are unstable, meaning they have a low activation energy and are very easily broken. Finally, ATP is soluble, so it can be easily transported around cells to wherever it's needed. 
If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.